Hello and welcome to a new Blender tutorial series. I'm Raymond Gabriel and in this series I'll be doing 3D modeling, texturing and possibly animation for any real world object, game prop or simple characters. And it will be by your request. Meaning that for every part of this series I'll be choosing one of your 3D models request in the comment section below and I'll be doing a tutorial for it. And hopefully you'll be able to learn a trick or two with every model. Any of your requests that will get 10 likes or more will be guaranteed a tutorial in one of the upcoming videos. To start off this series, I have decided to model these simple crates which can be used as a game prop and I think it's a good introduction to hard surface modeling. Without any further delay, let's get started. I was searching for a 3D model to start off this series and I found these crates on Google and I thought they are a very good starting point. You can actually download the original 3D model from the link in the image. I will be leaving that in the description below. And instead of downloading it, let's just try and model it ourselves. And I think it's a good practice. To start off, let's first import the image inside of Blender. Go to where you save the image, drag and drop it inside of Blender. As the image is not a front and right view, we cannot use it as a reference in the viewport, but we can actually use it as a guide while we are working on the model. So let's just delete the reference from the viewport and go to the corner and open up a new viewport from here and then change this one to image editor and then from here choose the image that we just imported so just to have it on the side here as a guide i think the first thing we need to start doing is the beveled edges all around the cube here so to do that let's go to edit mode select the cube by pressing a then press ctrl b and that will bevel the edges like that then with the scroll button increase the segments and make it around five maybe and then move your mouse until you have the desired offset i think about here is good enough then press left click to confirm in object mode press right click then select Shade Smooth to make the beveled edges smoother. Then press Tab to go to Edit Mode. Let's add these details in the 3D model. So to do that, press Ctrl R to add an edge loop. If you use the scroll button, you will increase the number of edge loops you can add. Press left click to confirm the number of edge loops, then press escape. And that will snap the new edge loops in the middle of the model, like that. Press Alt A to deselect everything. Press Alt and hold, then select one of the edges to select the whole loop. Press Alt and Shift, hold them both, then select this edge loop to select both edge loops. Press G, then Y and start moving on the Y axis like that. If you notice on the top left corner, the distance that these two edges are traveling is being displayed so right about here it's moving about 0.25 so let's just try that 0.25 in the negative direction then press enter press alt a to deselect As you can see here in the model, this detail is not going all around the cube like that and it's actually stopping right about here. So let's add an edge loop in the other direction. So press Ctrl R, add two edge loops to the other side, then press Escape to snap them in the middle. While they are both selected, press S then X to scale them out like that and maybe put them about here. Now press 3 on your keyboard to go to face select mode, select this face and go to the bottom side of this 3D model, press Ctrl and hold, then press the left key on this face and that will select all the faces between the first selection and the second selection. Let's do the same thing for the other side, press Shift and hold to select another face like that. Go to the top side, press Ctrl and hold, then select the top face. Let's extrude those inside by pressing Alt E and choosing extrude faces along normals. Alright, now move your mouse inside like that, right about here is good enough, then press left to confirm. As you can see, the shading is looking weird to fix that we need to go to this tab and then from normal check o2 smooth and that will return the shading to normal okay let's continue by adding this detail at the top of the box here let's add this detail right here it's the same thing Press Alt and hold, then select one of the vertical edges and that will select the whole face loop like that. As you can see, this is extruded inside. So let's try and press Alt E, then extrude faces and normal. As you can see, these three faces are also extruded inside. It's not really like that in the, in the reference. So let's undo that. And before extruding, let's press Shift and hold it. Then remove these three faces and also from here. Then press Alt E again and extrude it inside. 
like that. But this has created unnecessary faces at the sides of this extrusion. So let's just delete those faces by selecting them and then press X, then selecting faces. But after deleting, you will see that there is a gap. We can just select these four vertices and press F and that will fill it with a face but that is not actually a clean way to fix the issue because right now if you select this vertex and try to move it you'll see that you will be able to see inside the mesh and also for the top side so the right way to fix this is by adding more edge loops right here and merging this vertex to the rest of the model so let's add an edge loop by pressing ctrl r and put your mouse right around here so you can see the edge loop at the bottom side confirmed by left click then escape do the same thing for the upside now select one of the vertices then press period on your numpad and that will zoom in to that vertex let's try and merge this vertex to the other one that we just created to do that we can do it by just selecting both these vertices then pressing m and then selecting at last and that will merge the vertices at the last vertex selected but i like to use another method from here to change the snap to to vertex it's set to increment by default so make sure that it's set on vertex and from here toggle on the auto merge vertices okay while selecting this vertex you can press g move it like that put your cursor to the other vertex like that then press ctrl and that will snap it to the new vertex here then if you press left mouse button that will merge it automatically because we have auto merge here enabled let's do the same thing for the upper side this is just a quicker way to merge vertices together while we are modeling but make sure that you are aware that this toggle is on because you might merge vertices by mistake let's do the same thing for the other side if you press alt and hold you will select these four vertices together then press F and fill it with a face. Let's mirror the left side to the right side so we don't have to do all the stuff that we did here again. Okay? So let's just add an edge loop in the middle here. Press escape, put it in the middle. Go to where the right view is and press Alt to snap to the right orthographic. Press Z and go to wireframe. Press B for box select and select these vertices. Then press X and select vertices. All right, now go to the modifier tab and add a mirror modifier. Check Y axis and uncheck X axis. Let's start doing this detail here on the side of the box first thing we need to do is add the top edge right here so press ctrl r and add an edge loop right here you will see that there is a part that is extruded inside then there is some kind of a bridge and then there is another part that is extruded and it's going all around the box okay so let's add more edge loops and then you will see that there is a small detail in this part so let's add a small gap here between those two edge loops i think we need to add an edge loop around here and another one around here then press 3 on your keyboard for face select press c for circle select and let's start selecting the faces that will be extruded inside press escape to go out of circle select go down and select these faces as well now press alt e extrude faces along normals and push them inside like that now let's do this part I think we need to add an edge loop right here let's add an edge loop around here so it's a bit smaller and then select these three faces and extrude those outside like that okay maybe scale them on the z-axis have a bit of slope here also I think this part is sloped as well so select this vertex with control and hold then select this vertex that will select all these vertices and push them on the z-axis like that and from the downside as well You can select this vertex and this vertex, press G then Z and then move it on the Z axis and go to this vertex and press Ctrl. You will see that they snap to the same level of those other vertices that we pushed down. Let's go to wireframe, select all these vertices and push them up like that so that we make it bigger like in the reference. Okay. Let's continue by adding this part here. So let's add another edge loop here and another one around here. Press I to insert the face inside, then press E to extrude it out. Okay, let's try and model the handle right here. So let's select this face, press Ctrl and hold, then select this face to select all these faces. Press Shift D to duplicate this part. 
press B to get the separate menu and select the selection option to separate the selection to a new object like that all right so go to object mode select the new object press tab to go to edit mode press A to select everything then press S then X and scale it on the X axis to make it thinner like that press G then X and snap it to the edge here by pressing control okay let's press 1 on the keyboard to get the vertex select mode and select the top vertices and push them down a little like that okay now press a to select everything alt e and then extrude faces along normals like that okay as this part is flat let's flatten out this selection by pressing s then y and then zero and that will flatten all this part like that maybe move it on the y axis outwards select these two vertices and push them back to match the reference Let's try and add the detail here at the bottom. Go to the right orthographic view, go to wireframe. I think we need to add an edge loop by pressing Ctrl R around here. Maybe select these two edges and push them back like that. Okay, press 3 for face select and select this face. Then start extruding it downwards like that and scale it on the Y axis. Extrude one more time and scale it like that. Start creating the shape while you're extruding down. Let's duplicate this part to the other side, so press Shift D, then X, and snap it to the other side, like that. Okay, let's add the cylinder in between them, so press Shift and right click to put the 3D cursor in this place, Shift A, and add in a cylinder. Press S and scale it down, rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degree, maybe move it on the X axis like that. Press S and then Shift X to scale it on the Z and Y axis only to make it thinner like that then press s and x to scale it on the x-axis okay then right click shade smooth to make it look smoother i noticed that down there when i extruded this part the mirrored part has extruded also but it left this faces in the middle so just select these faces and delete them okay let's try and do these extrusion by a different method using an add-on called bool tools so make sure you have the add-on enabled go to edit preference and then from the add-ons tab search for bool what that add-on will do is that it will give you options here by pressing N, you will get this side panel, and then from the edit, you will see all these tools have been added. So let's try and use it. Add in a cube. Go to the front orthographic and rotate the cube like that. Scale it to the desired size. All right. Now select the cube, press Shift and hold, then select the bigger box. If you, from here, select difference, you will see that this cube has been subtracted from the bigger cube and has created this gap right here okay let's try and subtract the upper part here as well so select this cube press shift d to duplicate it to the upper side okay now select the cube then shift and hold select the bigger cube and then select the difference again let's try and apply the subtractions that we just did to make these a part of the mesh so we can edit it right now if you go to edit mode you will see that you don't see the subtraction so to do that you can actually go to the modifiers tab you'll see that the add-on has created a boolean modifier right now if you just press apply on one of the boolean modifiers you'll see that the face actually disappears and you can now see inside of the mesh to avoid that we need to first apply the mirror modifier and then apply the boolean modifiers now if you go to edit mode you'll see that the subtraction is now a part of the mesh. Now select these two cubes and delete them. As you can see, the subtraction in the mesh is not really clean and the topology is not really good. As you can see here, there are faces that has more than four vertices. For a clean topology, we need faces that has only four vertices. So let's try and fix the topology as much as we can. To do that, let's add an edge loop around here and let's push it on the y-axis and snap it right here by pressing ctrl on this vertex press ctrl r again and add another edge loop around here press 1 for vertex select select these two vertices then press j on your keyboard and that will join them with the edge in between okay select these two as well press j For these parts, I think I will just leave them as it is, as it will require unnecessary vertices. Let's check the subtraction at the lower part. For this part, I think we just need to 
avoid adding more edge loops, let's just select these two vertices and join them. Okay, let's connect these two vertices as well. If you press J, you'll see that it has added an edge in between them all and created vertices in the edges between them. Let's try and add this little detail in the middle. Press 3 for face select, then select this face, press Shift D to duplicate it, press P and separate selection to make it a new object. Alright, now go to edges, select this edge and delete it. Right now you will only have this outer line, let's extrude that on the Y axis and snap it to the other side here. Press Ctrl R and add two edge loops and scale them on the Y axis like that. Maybe add an edge loop around here, select these two faces and delete them. Okay, and here as well, let's add an edge loop, select these two faces and delete them. I think there is a little detail here, let's try to add that. So press 1 for vertex select, go to wireframe, select these vertices, select these as well, and then scale them on the y-axis a little, like that. Okay, we'll just extrude it like that and then press escape to snap it to its position. Now if you press S, you'll see that it's scaling outwards and inwards like that, but it's not respecting the normals. To actually scale along the normals, you can use the shortcut Alt S and that will scale it using the normals of the vertices. Let's try and select this loop, press S, then Y, then 0 and snap it like that so that it's in the same plane as the outer vertices. Let's select the other edge loop right here and move it on the Y axis and snap it with the outer edge loop as well. While selecting this edge, press E to extrude it on the Y axis and then get around here and then press Ctrl to snap it to the edge here. Let's do the same thing with the other side, select this edge, press E, then Y. Okay, let's add a little bit of thickness to this part, so add a solidify modifier. Let's first apply the scale and rotation, so press Ctrl A and apply rotation and scale to make sure that all the scale here and the rotation are 0 and 1. I think there is a problem here with the normals of the cube as some parts have the solidify to the outside and other parts to the inside. So to fix the normals, we first need to check if the normals are wrong. So to do that very quickly, you just need to press Shift N and that will recalculate the normals. Right now if you use the thickness, you'll see that it's working properly. Let's add a shade smooth by pressing right click. For the final part, let's add these two clips right here. As you can see, because this object is originally duplicated from a face from this box, the origin point of the new object is the same as the box. So to reset the origin point of the new object, you just need to right click, set origin and select origin to geometry and that will put the origin point to the center of the new object. Now press Shift D to duplicate this part and scale it like that from the origin point and push it out for the red part right here. Maybe scale it on the x-axis to make it larger like that. Let's add one more thing which is the cylinder right here. I think it's looking okay. Let's select these three parts, then press Ctrl J to make them all one object, press Shift D to duplicate this part, press Y. Right now all what we did right here we need to duplicate to the other side. So let's just select the box, go to edit mode, add an edge loop in the middle here, go to wireframe, select these vertices, press X and delete them. Okay, then add a mirror modifier and that should mirror everything on the X axis. Let's select these parts as well and add a mirror modifier to them as well. Because this part was originally duplicated from the box, you'll see that the origin point is the same with the box. So when I added the mirror modifier, it instantly applied it to the correct position. But if I selected this and try to add a mirror modifier to it, you'll see that it's mirroring along its new origin point, which we changed. So to fix that, we need to change the mirror object to the box. So from this eyedropper, select the box, and that should mirror along the origin point of the box. Alright, select the other. 
Okay, I think the model is almost done. What is left is that we need to add some pebbles to the edges. As right now, all the edges seems very sharp. So let's add a pebble modifier to all the shapes that we have and try to smoothen out those hard edges. It's very simple. Select the box, collapse the mirror modifier and add a bevel modifier like that. Increase the segments to about four. You'll see now that that has made the faces from the original pivot visible. To fix that, we just need to change the limit method from none to angle. But as you can see right now, all the edges are not really beveled right now. That's because Blender is doing something called clamp overlap, which is when two edges are overlapping over each other, it prevents the edges from beveling. So to really fix that very quickly, we just need to uncheck clamp overlap you will now be able to see a little bit of bevel on the edges. Let's increase the offset. You can press shift and hold it to, to increase the increments slowly. Let's, I think something like that is good enough. If you want to add different bevels to different parts of the mesh, you need to use the weight limit method here. If you just use that, you'll see that all the edges return to be sharp again. If you want them to start taking any bevel, let's go to edit mode and then go to edge select mode. Let's for example select this edge and then press ctrl and hold then select this edge. If you press N on your keyboard and then from item, the first tab right here, you will see that you have a mean bevel weight. If you increase that to 1, right now you will see that this edge has been beveled and all the other edges are sharp. This is just another way to add bevel to your edges, but for time sake, we will just use the angle limit method to apply a bevel to the whole model at once. Okay, let's add bevels to the other parts here as well. Okay, to quickly apply modifiers to other parts of the model, Select this model for example, then press shift and hold, then select this model, press ctrl L, that will get you the make links menu, then select modifiers. That will copy all the modifiers from this object to the first selected object. Let's take a look around the model and see if there is any part that is still missing. And also I think there is a little detail right here. To be able to add that, let's first select this vertex, press ctrl and hold it, then select this vertex for example, press ctrl b. Let's add another modifier that will make the shading better. Let's add a weighted normal. You will see that the shading is much better now. We forgot to mirror this cylinder. So select this cylinder and add a mirror modifier to it. Change the mirror object by using this eyedropper to the box and change the axis to Y axis. Let's add some materials to our 3D model here. Go to the material tab. You'll see that it has a default material here. So let's just change the base color. Hover over the color and then press E and that will get you the eyedropper. Select the orange color from the image and that will change the color here. Now if you press Z and go to material preview, you will see that the model changed to the color of the material. Let's add another material for the other color. Press the plus sign here to add a new material. Press new, go to the base color, press E and then select the other color like that. Let's apply it to the model in the viewport. Select all the vertices like that then press ctrl plus and that will grow the selection to cover up this part as well. Then press assign. Now if you go to material preview, you will see that this part has taken the other material as well. Okay, let's continue by changing the material for this part. So instead of this material, let's just change it to the other material we just did. Let's create a new material for the red part right here. Hover over the small cube, then press L and that will select the small cube, then press assign. Let's do the same thing for the other part. Press the plus sign and instead of adding a new material, we already created it. So just select it from here. Let's try and change the material for this handle and make it a little bit darker. Right now, if you try to change the color of it, you'll see that all the material on the other objects is being affected. That's because this material is on six other parts of this model. So to make this material a unique material, you just need to press the number here and that will make it a unique material. You can now just select the base color and make it darker like that and that will only affect this part. It 
would be better if you renamed your materials to be able to identify them easier. But just for time's sake, I will not do that. Okay, let's add a color variant here in the middle of this part. So select this part and press I to inset inside like that. To make sure that the left side is exactly as the right side, let's just delete half of the vertices like that. And in the mirror modifier, enable Y axis as well. Right now we only have a quarter of the model and it's mirrored on the X axis and on the Y axis. So we have a full cube. What we need to do next is some texture painting. In order to start, we first need to UV unwrap the model. So in order to do that correctly, we first need to apply the mirror modifier because right now if we try to unwrap this model, we will only unwrap a quarter of it and all the other parts will be copied from this one. So we first need to apply the mirror modifier. We can add it back at any time. After applying the mirror modifier, select all the cube like that, then press U and then select Smart UV Project, then OK. What will that do? If you open up another viewport here and then change this one to UV Editor for example, you will see that the whole cube has been unwrapped. I think the Smart UV Project has done a good job. Any cube shaped model will be unwrapped very good with the Smart UV Project. So right now we can start texture painting. But first, we need to go here, Shader Editor, and add a texture to be able to paint on it. So from here, press Shift A, and then Texture, add in an image texture, like that, and then press New. Rename this one to Create Paint, for example, and change the width 2048 by 2048. Okay, then press OK. Attach the color to the base color here. You'll see that the all the material has changed to a black color. That's because the texture that we just created is fully black. Don't worry about that, we'll change it in a minute. So press Ctrl Tab and that will get you all the modes that you can go to. Switch to Texture Paint and from here you can switch to a Fill Brush. Let's switch here to the Reference and then from here press E to get the eyedropper and then change the color to the color of the crate right here and then left click in the viewport and that will fill the texture with the brownish color. Let's change the brush to the draw brush here and then let's change its color to the color of the red lines here and from here maybe let's change the value up to make it a little bit brighter. When I draw now you will see that I can draw with the red color. Let's undo that. Let's try to make those lines right here. So I think to do that we can just simply do it with the brush like that and we need to change the stroke from a brush circle like that to a line. So let's change the stroke from here, stroke method from space to line. Right now I can draw a line and that will create a straight line like that. Let's press F to change the size of the brush. You can also change the fall off from this one to, to this. So when you start drawing with your brush, you will have a more solid color and not a faded one that is the default one. If you press and hold, then drag it, you will be able to see this line. And then if you press Alt on your keyboard, that will snap it to 45 degree angle so let's try to do that with these angled lines right here. As you can see here, if you look closely, you'll see that there is a sharp line right here going all around it and make it look like a square. Right now it doesn't look like that. In order to do that, I think we need to switch the viewport here to image editor. You'll see here the UV has changed color as well. We can use it to pick the colors of the crate. So let's change the color to the brown color here. Right now, if I started drawing, you'll see that I can remove the red lines that I just created. So let's press F to increase the size of the brush. Okay, and let's try and remove some of the red lines that we did. Next, let's try and create this little triangle here. Same thing, let's press E and change the color to this one. You can actually create a color palette from over here and go down until you see color palette, press new. You can use that to add the colors that you often use with your model so you don't have to pick it again and again. Right now we have the red color, let's change that to the brownish color here and then press plus again. You'll see that now I have two colors I can choose from. So let's stay on the red color. I think we forgot to do something. Instead of just drawing on one side of the model like that and we have to repeat it here and all over the model, we can just go from up here and mirror on the X and Y axis. So anything that we draw here will be mirrored right here and will be mirrored on the other side right here. 
Look now, you will see that it's mirrored right here and right here as well. Okay, let's change the color to the brown one and start removing some of it. We can add those lines as well. The last thing I want to paint is the barcode right here. To do that, we can actually use a texture for a barcode and use it as a stamp and stamp the barcode right here. Let's go up there and from texture, press new. Okay, then from down there, you will be able to change the texture that you can use with the painting. I have an image for a barcode that we can use. I actually removed the white background that I found it with and changed it to an alpha background. So we can only use the barcode itself. You can use it. I will be linking it in the description below. Or you can google barcode and you will find a lot of images. But just make sure to remove the white background and make it an alpha or transparent background. So let's just choose it and open image. Right now if you try to paint you will see that you are painting with the barcode. Let's change the stroke to space and also from texture change the mapping from tiled to stencil. What will that do is that you will see that now I have the image appearing in the viewport itself. I can move it it by pressing right click and hold it you will be able to move the image around the viewport you can also press shift and hold it and scale it like that you can also press ctrl and rotate it let's try and put it right about here make sure to remove the x and y mirror and then start painting on top of it you'll see that now it has painted the barcode right here just like in the reference okay when you're done go to texture and remove the texture that we're using this part i think has the same material for the texture that we just created so just remove that let's make a new material for it and change its base color to the default color of the box here let's try and add some lighting and camera to our scene to be able to render out our model so go to wireframe select all the objects in the scene go to the right orthographic and move it above the grid like that press shift c to put the 3d cursor back in the center of the scene and add in a plane scale it out go to edit mode select this edge by pressing 2 then extrude it on the z-axis select this edge and then press ctrl b to bevel it and with the scroll button make it smoother like that right click change smooth maybe move it on the y-axis like that and scale it on the x-axis as well let's try and add some lighting to the scene shift a from light add in an area lamp rotate it like that and from the light setting here change the size to make it bigger like that and maybe change the power to about 500 okay let's change the viewport to render shading okay let's duplicate the lighting to the other side rotate it maybe change the color of it to a more orange color like that maybe change the background color to something more grayish let's add in a camera Press 0 on your numpad to look through the camera and then press N to get the side panel and then from view, look camera to view to be able to move the camera. Remove the lock camera to view. Let's change the render engine to cycles and let's take a look. Let's change the background color to the color of the background here. I think it looks much better. Also, let's go to shader editor and change the roughness and make it about 0.2 to make it a little bit shinier and also for the other materials here okay the last thing i think we need is adding some pump to the material so it's not that smooth and we have some displacement going on so to do that let's add in a noise texture from here and from vector add in a pump map connect the color to the height and the normal to the normal let's select those two nodes copy them by pressing ctrl c go to the other materials and put it here as well You'll see here that the pump is too much. Let's just change the scale to make it bigger around 300 maybe. And change the strength to 0.1 or maybe 0.15. Just to have a little bit of pump going on on the plastic. Take the two nodes again, copy them and put them again on the other material. Okay, right now I think we're ready to start rendering. Maybe change the sampling to about 200. And then from here, enable denoising so we don't have any noise in the scene. Let's just try and render it out and see what we will get. The render is done. I think it's looking okay. One thing I forgot to mention is that from the UV editor, make sure that you save out the texture that we have painted. Because if you close the blender file and reopen it, this texture will be gone. So make sure to save as your 
texture or you can just press this toggle fake user and that will save it inside the blender file even if you don't save it let's go back to the render result here to finish up the tutorial let's maybe add some compositing effects to this render go to the compositing tab and then from here use nodes press ctrl and shift hold them both then left click on the render layers to be able to see the render in the background press v to zoom out let's add some brightness and contrast increase the contrast for the image let's add some glare change that to fog glow and threshold maybe put it to 0.1 i think we don't need to put much effort anymore i think it's looking good enough make sure just to select the output here and put it in the composite as well to be able to go back to layout and see it in the render result here you can now from here save as and save your render and that's it for this part i hope that you found it useful I'm eagerly waiting for your requests in the comment section to decide on the model for the next part. If you liked someone else's request, make sure to leave him a like to increase the chances of that model getting a tutorial. If you'd like to follow up with the rest of the series, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.